Hello there and welcome back to Cory Losers for the continuation of our Thrawn's Revenge 3.0 preview playthrough as the New Republic. In the last episode we took a few more planets from the Arido Authority, uh, but really what we're going to be doing right now is dealing with our economy. So we're going to start off going to Bakura here and get two mines there because we are at 2 out of 15, so now we're at 4 out of 15, 6 out of 15. Uh, seven out of 15 there. And we'll need another farmland, I think. So let's see. Yeah, we're just even on farm, on food. So we're not getting a positive influence, but we're not getting negative. And we need, uh, we do need a farm. So that'll be one of the things we do. Uh, taking Ariadu would be nice, and Sluis Van, but obviously those are going to be harder planets to assault. I think Elrude, Exocron, and Vergesso are all kind of easier. Enemy fleet is about to invade Generis. Uh, I'm probably just going to let that happen. Like, there's not really much we can do there. We could upgrade Ithor. Maybe we will. But again, this whole area is not really one that I'm super heavily invested in. I don't want to invest in it super heavily financially. So, like right now, the focus really is just keeping, getting our economy moving. See if we can finish these mines by next galactic week. That'll be a, a good income boost for us. We'll probably finish one at each of these planets. I don't know that we'll get through the second ones. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Construction complete. Do one there. Good on Solus there. If they're not actually coming into Conquered for a Junction. All right, yeah, that's a that was a fifty percent boost to our income right there already. And that's just through the through those structures. It's like, we can still get the trade stations. Generis. I'm just gonna get the money out of this. Huh. Did I not sell fast enough? Oh, I didn't sell the factory, that's why. I played myself with the lack of icons. Forgot we had one there, so that's gonna be, that's really bad. That's really bad. Uh, Ryloth, do we have room for... Let's get food and industrial parts. Let's get in the other order. Let's get industrial parts. Let's get food. All right. Um, you guys are going to go over there. Plants are using more industrial parts than producing. We knew that, so that's why we got the other thing. Uh, 
Uh, let's get a trade station here. A trade station at Bespin. Shit, we got an unrest stack at Bespin. Uh, we're fine on that. We just need the one industrial supply and we'll be fine on that. So yeah, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but the math on this page is weird. Uh, that's one of the things we still need to figure out is why the hell it does weird things like that sometimes. Roderick is asking, it looks kind of laggy when you go to Galactic Map. Is that just a stream delay? No, it's when you tick over between weeks, there's a bit of lag. Uh, that's when everything gets calculated. Like the AI is doing the doing their stuff, but it's also calculating like influence and everything. So there's always going to be a bit of a, a dip there. It used to not line up between the weak transfer and the AI, so there'd be like up to three points where it's kind of spiking. But instead, that's been put together more. Uh, do we want food production? More food production? Yeah, let's do food production. Let's do two more mines. Do another mine. Let's get... Oh, we never actually got that on Bespin. That's part of why they're not happy. All right. So that's why Bespin wasn't happy. Six thousand credits next week, almost. Gabe's asking, can you bring down unrest over time, or build buildings to guard against it? So unrest, you can get an unrest stack at uh, if your influence is below, uh, if it's one, two, or three, you have a chance to get unrest. Uh, and I think this was earlier below. Yeah, it's three right now. So you are guaranteed to get one at influence level one. You have a 50% chance to get one at influence level two, and you have a 33% chance to get one at influence level three. If you get your influence above level six, then it'll get reduced every week. So the same stuff that would increase influence before, or mostly the same stuff, can increase it now. Uh, there's a few changes like uh, you get the resource modifiers. That's what resources do. Uh, but the um, the timed influence increases are gone. So like sitting there owning the planet won't automatically bring your influence up. Did we actually lose both of those? No, we lost one. And then I'm not sure what this other... I think this is supposed to be Red Tide or something. I think this is Far Shots. I need to fix that name. All right, I'm gonna send Voon back to uh, back to Solist. This is going to cost us 50 ship crews. We're okay for ship crews right now. I think the income of ship crews is a bit too high right now, but I didn't want to clamp down too hard on the economy. So I think it works out all right. Atrevis will be able to get more mines here. All 
All right, we're into week eight. Let's see how Bespin feels about us now. All right, I think we're at four influence. So the unrest stack, or five there now. So the unrest stack is going to stay there until we're a bit higher, but that's okay. As long as you don't get more. Uh, I, I could have swore we voted for Borsk. Did we just never actually go through with that? Or is that possibly broken? Is this a blame Jorit moment? Yeah, I definitely did it before I had to restart, but I thought I did it again after that. Uh, well, that'll only update on week change, so we'll see next week if it is supporting Borsk. The election is on week 10, but the supported candidate is stated beforehand. Like That changes on week update after you support one. So you can change who you support whenever. Approaching. Uh, Contrum. I can never remember what Contrum is. There it is. I mean, good luck. Probably have to retreat from this. Wait, is that giving us any bonuses? That's five extra food. So... We are going to need another farm after losing that. Well, actually, we can hold on to it. I think we can hold on to it. Let's build those mines. Is that going to be putting us near the limit for mines? I think that did put us at the limit for mines. Um... Let's get a trade port in a few other places. Like, we want some where it's better value, but we can't be too picky. Yeah, that's, that's a retreat if I've ever seen one. Gonna be kind of sad if the chief of state candidate support isn't set up for the new Republic playthrough. Jesus, get out of here, Armada! I'm not sure why my fighters aren't spawning, but the other ones are. It's kind of annoying. Yes, these are new models for the Strike Cruisers. Someone will need to check the dev build and see if it's a constant player thing or if maybe I fucked something up somehow when I added the patron units, but I don't think that would make any sense. So I think Zyzer was complaining about not having fighters last night as well. So it may be something with uh, how the AI is set up. I guess we're doing a hard mode no fighters playthrough. 
I mean, with the patron units, it's no big deal. I can just set it to, uh... Set it to spawn units, but for the regular units, that's a bit more problematic. Alright, so the scripts are working, or else the strike cruisers wouldn't have left. So, I'm not sure, I think it's just the fighter spawn that isn't working for that. No, I, I can easily turn on the fighter spawn for the patron units. I can just add the tag to spawn their default fighters. That's how I do every other playthrough. But this time I added them to the library. It's just this time the library is not working for us. So feels bad. Stations generally do outrange ships. They have an interdictor, so we're not getting away from here. The singular retreats did, because they didn't turn on the interdictor for that, but... We got the strike cruisers out, at least. Is Ifigen worth doing a trade port on? I don't... It's probably not. We're probably going to get attacked here. It's not really safe enough to... Let's do Bothwai. And Kothless. Okay, can we hold off this invasion? I'm gonna th think no. Let's try it anyways. Well, this kind of thing is also why we do a month of dedicated testing, even after we're feature complete, because stuff breaks all the time. Then it gets fixed. I've always found the tow cable ability a lot less reliable in FOC than in EAW. Like, I remember using it all the time in EAW, and it working just fine. But then when it got to Forces of Corruption, it was just... it, it stopped working. A lot of 
secondary functions, that was kind of the case. So I don't know if it's just... If it's actually true or if it's just that I stopped trying to use it as much. I think it's been years since I actually tried to do it. Okay, yeah, that is one of the, yeah. No one is confirming in chat. Alright, fall back here. FOZ broke a lot. Uh, unit reflections in water is one thing. Accuracy tags on units is another. That's why everything needs to have a hard point if you want it to have any kind of accuracy, inaccuracy. Let's see if we can hold it back long enough to get that built. That wasn't Forces of Corruption that started that, Alexander. It was... Uh, that's always been there. Because that's something getting hit that wasn't intended to be targeted by the projectile. Like, if you target something and there is something between the thing you're targeting and the thing doing the targeting, the thing that gets hit by the projectile will take it to the hull damage, which the game is not built around being able to do. And it wouldn't be a difference between Empire at War and Forces of Corruption where like it wouldn't just assign it to a hard point in base game. It's just a factor of how the game works. Gonzo's asking again, hi again, question, will you do a Rise of the Galactic Empire mod from Order 66 until the second Death Star era? Uh, that would be the area potentially being covered by Imperial Reign if we ever get to a point where we're able to actively make it. So we have a name for it, we have some assets for it, but those assets will mostly be used for unit sub mods until such a time as we actually are able to start on it. So there are plans for one, but uh, that, that was a waste of money. There are plans for one, but that doesn't necessarily mean we'll be able to get to it, just that we would like to be able to do it. Because that'd be even after Revenge Revenge is pretty well set up. Hmm. They're going for it. God bless them. I think there was three ATATs. We're at two so far. The hover tank in there, or the heavy tracker, not hover tank. Let's see what they're looking like over here. The last of the ATATs is coming in. So let's move back. We'll reestablish back here. Alright, you guys can run more. Roger 
I don't think we're going to bother building anything more on this build pad. They've made it perfectly clear they won't want to deal with that. Uh, but let's go... Shit. We need the infantry over here. We need stuff to tank for the turrets while the turrets shoot. We were concerned that technology will leave the game behind, making it hard to even load properly like Empire Earth. I'm sure that'll happen eventually, and then we'll just... That'll be a good time to stop, but... It's not something that I actively worry about. So that'd be a super long time off, and... I'd hope by the time that it happens, I won't care that much about, <laughs> about it. Uh, Ryan Warhart's asking, do you have an end goal for how you want TR or FOTR to look like? Not really an end goal. We have, like, short and long-term plans. Uh, there's no, like, specific idea on what a stopping point would look like, which is scary, because I would like to be done someday, but right now it's basically just, like, we have a bunch of shit we want to do, a bunch of shit we want to try, and then when we stop wanting to do it, we'll stop doing it, but what that would actually end up looking like. Who knows? I copy. So like when we plan stuff, it's not necessarily a guarantee that it's going to happen. It's just assuming we are still working on things, this is what that would end up looking like. But on that same note, Ganso is saying uh, would Imperial Reign be after finishing TR and FOTR? No, because like a lot of the stuff is stuff that like a lot of the work we do is stuff that applies to all mods. So aside from just like throwing in the models, which we usually don't do outside of like contextlessly, uh, any time that we're working on uh, one mod, a lot of those changes would also improve the other mods. So we don't tr we don't tend to think of things as like oh, we'll do this when we're finished this project. We usually just have those breakpoints of like, what do we need to do to accomplish our goals, either short, medium, or long-term for this particular mod? Because uh, like, a lot of people initially when we announced Fall of the Republic, for example, was coming back, would say like, oh, well, why aren't you finishing the mod before starting another one? But you don't really finish the mod, like the changes that we make in TR and FOTR impact each other and make it easier to work with each other. And the people who do like the gameplay changes are usually different from the people doing the uh, the art changes. Usually, like some of us, like me and Bob, do a lot of everything. But in general, it all kind of helps each other get done. So, Minty Kiwi Crunch is asking. You probably answered this before, but are the Emperor of the Hand getting new ground units, or is that going to be in a later update? That'll be a later update. We're going to be doing a few more stat changes on their existing ground units, uh, but. For the actual redesigns of their stuff, that'll have to be a uh, future update. Please don't take that. Because like the Empire of the Hand updates in general were... We didn't think we'd even get as far as we did in this release with it. It was going to be kind of its own thing later. Uh, but it just ended up getting... Or Aceratol managed to get a bunch of the models done for... The Empire of the Hand in space, and so did uh, Endcar and Three Coal. So a lot of that ended up in 3.0 when it would probably have been left for a few releases from now. Otherwise, so it worked out pretty well. But all right, I think we've done as much as we can here. Uh, no awesome creation. That ability doesn't work. Enemy fleet's about to invade Balsavis. I don't like that. 
But that will mean that Iriadu is kind of undefended. Construction complete. Well, let's build uh let's build he was an MC eighty boy. I do wish I had fighters. Well, they had a good use of their ISD there. Alright, I think that's going to do it for the episode as well as for the stream. So, hope you are all enjoying the series so far. Bugs aside, they should generally be pretty easy stuff to fix. But we'll have to deal with them for the playthrough. Because uh, it's not the kind of thing that you can change in an ongoing save, unfortunately. But I should be able to switch it so that the patron ships use the XML spawns. And I might even do that for the regular ships as well. Uh, they'll use their default spawns, which is... Not ideal, but at least we'll have fighters for the playthrough. But, uh, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed the stream. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.